This is Twit. Well, I'm glad Ben's here because he can represent the voice of China. Why are you laughing? He's well, gone. He, uh, the chair is empty. <laughs> he must have known I was going to the <laughs> Lenovo story, right? So I'll tell the story, and then when Ben gets back, you know what? He's uh, his yes. uh, three-year-old woke up, I bet. That must be. Yeah. Well, well he'll come back in a moment. Uh, ben Thompson for Stratechery is not here. But good news, uh, Lisa Edichico is here. She's from uh, Business Insider. And, of course, Christina Warren from Mashable. This infuriated me. Lenovo, uh, they were caught in September and didn't do anything about it till January and now say, oh, we messed up. We made a mistake. So sorry. Here's a fix-it tool. What, would, what did they do? They put software. Now, remember, there's a huge price pressure on PC manufacturers. Their margin on consumer-grade PCs, the low end of the market, is, is practically nothing. You're buying an HP stream for 200 bucks. They're that bill of goods is probably 200 bucks. So companies make up the the difference. They make some profit by putting trialware on your system. We've all seen how junked up Windows computers can get with McAfee antivirus. I've even had Windows PCs with two antiviruses on them, uh, you know, and all sorts of crap. But this takes the cake. Lenovo, we don't know when, but apparently started putting something called Superfish on their consumer-grade laptops. What does Superfish do? Well, first of all, what it does is incredibly annoying. It puts ads on sites you're visiting from that Lenovo put there, that Levo Lenovo makes money on. So you go to visit Twit, and you'll see ads that aren't on the Twit page because Lenovo has put Superfish on its laptop. That's bad enough. But the thing that's really infuriating is in order to do this, Superfish creates a man-in-the-middle attack. They actually break secure socket layers. They break SSL. Um, and so they in intercept not only normal web traffic, but secure web traffic using a self-signed security certificate. By the way, easily spoofed by attackers, so it opens a massive security hole on your system. And if you think when you've been using your Lenovo Y50, which was one of the devices that this was on. If you think that your conversation with your bank was encrypted and safe or your conversation with Amazon, your credit card information encrypted and safe, it wasn't. It wasn't. Lenovo put software on it that broke SSL. Um, Lenovo said their benefit from this was minor, so that's even stupider. They should have made millions out of this. This is appalling uh, security researchers have already demonstrated attackers how attackers could use Superfish to create an attack. Lenovo says they're not yet aware of any attacks targeting customers. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Now, Lenovo has responded uh, in January. They took down the, ser the server that was doing this uh, intermediation, and uh, they have posted on the Lenovo website uh, information about which products are affected. It's not, by the way, the business products, ThinkPad, ThinkCenter. Lenovo desktop, ThinkStation, ThinkServer, and SystemX, according to Lenovo, are not impacted. I'm not sure I would trust Lenovo at this point in anything. And they do give you removal tools. And, and if you follow the link on their site, a long list of affected notebooks, E-Series, Flex-Series, G-Series, M-Series, S-Series, U-Series, Y-Series, Yoga-Series, and Z-Series, many of the machines all affected by this. A self-signed root certificate breaks SSL, it is, it is offensive in the highest degree, and it is appalling that any company would do this with full knowledge of what they were doing. And I don't care if they've apologized and stopped it. They stopped it because they were caught. Ben, are you back? Yeah, good. I'm back. I'm back. Am I crazy to be... I've My, my take on this is never again will I buy a Lenovo product or will I recommend it. It hurts me because I've re recommended Lenovo's ThinkPads for a long time. They're... I th always thought they were great computers. This is a what happened. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge uh, Lenovo fan as well. Um, the and someone I, I I stepped out, but someone said that I should point out I can't speak for China because I'm in Taiwan. But uh, that's I'm sorry, I, Taiwan is not into. China. Taiwan is not well, China. Hey, hey, Leo will learn careful, this Leo. one day. Leo, you're gonna you're, now you're gonna get an email saying that you I know it's say a big political thing. I was a Chinese studies just, major. Just don't talk about it. I know why it's an issue. <laughs> Never mind. All right. Um, uh, 
but I th- actually, I, I, you nailed it right at the beginning, Leo, and that was when you talked about the profit margins. Uh, the, you're, you're exactly right. The average PC maker does not make a single cent on their PC. They make all their money on the pre-installed software and, uh, and stuff like that. And so that's why to get the, to buy, you know, some of them do sell PCs without anything on there. Uh, they cost more and they cost more because that they need to make, they need to make money somewhere. And so indirectly, if anyone is to, I mean, obviously Lenovo is to blame to be clear, but Microsoft share is blame here. And the reason they share blame um, is this, the, the PC market is the way Microsoft drove it to look in that really? there's tons of people competing to basically on price because they've been totally commoditized. All the value was was pulled out by Microsoft in the OS layer. And so Microsoft captures all the value, leaving basically the the OEM makers to oh, to. But well, Microsoft for the, didn't for make the them yeah. ch- charge yeah. less no, for their so, computers. But the, no, so, so, no, well, they, they I mean, did, though. Technically, because, we because, did. We demanded cheap computers. Right. Well, that's that's the second point is is it, even then you re, who really bears the blame is is consumers because we buy based on price. And if you look at it, yes, Lenovo was wrong um, and they deserve they deserve to be to be excoriated for it. Oh, I'm never, I, I am, uh, I couldn't be more upset about this. But at the same time, like the, we're all depending, basically the market came to be that we depended on the good graces of these companies to not, to not cross the line and go to the dark side. When in reality, all the incentives were for them to do just that. And, and we shouldn't, well, we should be outraged that this happened. I don't think we should be surprised. And quite frankly, we shouldn't be surprised if the same thing happens on Android because it's the exact same dynamic going on. Google is trying to extract all the value from the ecosystem, leaving all these, all their OEMs to compete on price. And that's why there's lots of pre-installed crap on there as well. And um, again, consumers, there's enough consumers that only buy based on price that this works but there are consequences, and and it's the same thing with any ad based company that we all need to be cognizant of is that the incentives are pointing in the wrong direction. And sure, it's fun to get great stuff for free, but you're playing with fire, uh, and and this is a very real example of the sort of fire that you're playing with. I think it's fair to blame Microsoft for decisions they made 10 and 15 years ago that have driven the, pl- the market to this place. But I, I do think that it's worth noting that basically, you know, Microsoft's been kind of in a position the last few years where they've known that the cesspool of, of adware and pre-installed software gunk that really makes the, the Windows experience terrible. And to a certain extent, they've actually been kind of barred from doing a lot about it. I'm not defending Microsoft at all, but they've been kind of, their, their hands have been tied a little bit because of the various, you know, uh, restrictions put in place by the EU and and, and other things with their Department of Justice, you know, trial way back, where they, they have a difficult time limiting the things that OEMs can do without, you know, breaking, uh, without people saying, no, oh, no, now you're, now you're, you know, stifling what, what the manufacturers can do to these machines. You know, there was even a, a period of time, I think they still do this at the Microsoft stores where they sell machines that basically yeah. just have Windows on them and don't have adware. Microsoft Signature, understood yes. that people were getting a crap experience in Windows thanks to all this adware being installed by HP and others. So they created this signature program. And in fact, Lenovo does sell computers at the Microsoft store under the signature program. And it's plain Windows. You pay more for it. Right. And I mean, it's absolutely, you know, to Ben's point, he's right. This is kind of the, the world that we live in and both consumers, you know, it is what it is. But I'm not ready at all to give Lenovo or frankly, Superfish. I think that a lot of the blame has been put on Lenovo without talking about the company that actually is doing this and the fact that they wrote this program that would be install a root certificate on Windows that would break HTTPS. And that, that company has not said anything, will not talk, uh, kicked one of our reporters out of their office on Friday who tried to talk to them. Um, and, and I think it's worth looking into how many deals do they have with other OEMs. Um, but it opens up to me a broader question of, you know, Lenovo should not be off the hook and, and, and shouldn't be just because it's the game doesn't mean that you don't pay for the consequences. You know, the, the, the whole point is everybody's doping, just don't get caught. And if you get caught, you're going to do time for it is, is basically well, how, the, how it and works. And that's why I think we should boycott Lenovo. We should put them out of business as a very strong message, not to Lenovo, too late to every other manufacturer that this is the price you pay. You know, Sony got away with this, putting a root kit uh, on yeah, uh, games on for DRM. And they kind of- No, it was music CDs. Music, music CDs. CDs. 
That's right. It was, it was even music worse. CDs. It was even worse than, than a game. It was a music CD. If you put it in your computer, it put the brute kit on. But yeah. And they got away with it. I don't they think did get away with we it. should not have let Sony get away with it. We should no. not now let Lenovo get away with it. By the way, uh, the only statement uh, came to Ars Technica's Dan Gooden, the only statement from Superfish, um, attributed to the CEO Adi Pinhas. Superfish, by the way, although they have an office in uh, Palo Alto, is an Israeli company. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the statement uh, said that uh, Superfish is not a vulnerability. It is. Uh, there has been significant misinformation. This is his statement. Circulating about Superfish software pre-installed on certain Lenovo laptops. Software shipped on a limited number of computers in 2014. <laughs> Get this mealy-mouthed adware. In an effort well, to... I think, I, think, I think there's an interesting point here, Leo. The last time I was on, we, talk, we were talking about... Um, I think it was when David Cameron was asking, was calling for a a backdoor for law enforcement to use. Yeah, and I think you. This a is a backdoor. Well, a point that we <laughs> made in the a point we made on, on that podcast was there. There is a lack of understanding of what that implies. Right. And um, well, and that's what Superfish what, what, is saying. Let, let me just finish this. Just despite the false and misleading statements, this is Superfish CEO, made by some media commentators, me, and bloggers, the Superfish software, he says, does not present a security risk. And this is what he interprets as a security risk. Hey, in no way does Superfish store personal data or share such data with anyone. Unfortunately, in this situation, a vulnerability was introduced unintentionally by a third party. Now they're blaming someone else. Both Lenovo and Superfish did extensive testing of the solution, but it wasn't identified. This is, by, by the way, this is really reprehensible. This guy is now hiding behind some unnamed third party. Oh, we didn't do this. We didn't yeah, do the this. Part, the worst part is I bet most people that own Lenovo computers, people outside of you know the tech world that aren't like us, don't even understand what's going on. I mean, how many people really even understand what, encryption means or any of this and it's like it's really putting the consumer in a super vulnerable position because i mean when you think about the types of connections that are being broken those are banking sites those are online mm -hmm. shopping sites um and it's it's just really terrible and i you know it's hard to understand how and why lenovo would even kind of let something like this happen because like you mentioned um it's not even like they benefited that much from using superfish like i understand that you know, the profits on PCs are extremely small and a lot of PC makers aren't really making that much um, off of just sales alone. But it's not even like they're making that much money off of Superfish being on their computers. That's what's like, really pathetic, isn't it? And it the is. fact that they've gotten <laughs> caught hurts them so much because now people aren't going to want to buy Lenovo computers. So in the end, no. in the long run, it's it's totally... A huge mistake. Obviously, a yeah. huge, huge mistake. Huge. On Thursday, Superfish officials said they stood by a statement issued by Lenovo. This is Thursday... Thursday. Quote, and we have Lenovo thoroughly investigated this technology and do not find any evidence to substantiate security concerns. Within hours, Lenovo yanked that sentence. Yes, they did. And their CTO said, oops, we blew it. We're sorry. It is a security problem. Yep. It is. Whenever you, this is a man in the middle attack. It is. Perpetrated it on is. every Lenovo user. And Lenovo makes great products too. That's the sad thing, especially, you know, for business computers, like the ThinkPad line, like they make some of the best, you know, computers for businesses out there. And I'm sure that consumers are definitely not going to want to, you know, buy their products anymore. What about Motorola? Lenovo owns Motorola. Does this mean? Yep. Uh, I think, I think there's, I think though there's, there's an Occam's razor explanation here, which I'm trying to get to. And that is um, like, I suspect that, and this is why the incentive stuff matters. Like incentives don't matter because I'm incentivized to go rob a bank, so I rob a bank. Of course, right. I know robbing a bank is wrong, and and I I suspect that Lenovo's CEO and CTO knows that doing this is is wrong. And I don't think they were they were sandbagging. I actually suspect that they just no. did another pre-installed deal. And, That's exactly what and, it was. They didn't really appreciate what was happening, and that's why I drew the connection to the to the the David Cameron podcast. Like, there even among people who should know, there's not really an appreciation for what right. what security means and what and how security can be compromised. It's just something that people don't know about, and and so I actually suspect that. It was just another deal. Someone made it. Maybe someone in Lenovo knew. I, I actually honestly doubt it was someone that high up because 
as 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 Lisa just said, like it it doesn't make any sense to do this. It's it's way too high risk. Um, and for, I mean for the cost. I mean you, we have you know you know nationally acclaimed podcaster Leo Laporte calling for. for but wait a, a minute. Well, hell, how with that? I did it on the radio show, which is heard by a lot more normal people. But wait a minute. No, Even but, but, if but, they didn't know about the man in the middle, isn't it wrong to put ads on a website that weren't there originally to make some money? Isn't that wrong? It is. Well, it is. That's and what their, this stuff was supposed to do. That's the legitimate use of it. But and their the, the, explanation the, the, was terrible. We we interviewed their CTO on Friday, and I can quote from from that interview. We in and, and our our um, reporter, our intern, he did a great job, really pressing the guy too. And he was saying, "Okay, but realistically, do you think there are customers out there who would want superficial on their computer?" And this is the jackass's answer. I think there are many customers out there who are interested in having tools that help them shop, tools that help them do what they're doing better. Whether that's specific to one user or not, that's a different story. He's they're they're still. Like trying to play, you know, I mean, they, their answer, their pat line, which is, we thought people would love this product, is such complete BS. I mean, you know, they, they were them. installing this for, for do one Do you want additional ads on, ads on a money. website? What do you think? Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, here's that's just the generic <laughs> PR speak, it sounds like. No, here's, me. Yeah, here's the answer. The answer response. is. I mean, nobody wants to see more ads, especially ads that aren't supposed to be there in the first place. And it's just like. I mean, it seems really selfish on their part. They're not even really considering like the damage that has happened from this, and they, they, it doesn't really seem like they care based on their public response so far. No, here's here's this is I, no this is here's the answer. The answer is which he didn't say, and because no one can say is yeah, we put crap on there because people are cheapskates. Like that's the issue here. That's the underlying issue. That's why this is on there. Forget all the stuff that happened in the meantime. The issue is that people go into Best Buy or wherever and they buy the cheapest computer. And guess what? You get what you pay for. Yeah, but like, you know that's the, the same end, excuse no, used by ISPs who do the same thing. But that's uh, but oh that's well, you exactly, won't pay us enough for internet access, so we're gonna have to monetize you by putting ads on websites you visit. Well, that doesn't I mean, make it, it okay. It, no, doesn't it doesn't make it okay, but my point is like you, you, as an industry, if you set like this is why incentives matter. Like all the incentives are in place for this to happen. It was inevitable that this happened. It just Microsoft, happened to happen to Lenovo. Microsoft and I'm not lobbied saying, hard to get manufacturers to support the signature PC program to a resounding yeah. no, no interest. The, the, in the no interest flows from consumers because consumers didn't want to pay for it. So like at the end, like so you're my, saying my whole point is they were I'm faced like, with that they would make computers no one would buy. It's like people. It's like people constantly complaining about airlines. You know why airlines suck? Because why? people don't pay for differentiation. Air, American Airlines try to do bigger seat width. They advertise on it. Right. No one, Nobody no one wanted. wanted to pay for it. Continental advertised on better service. They went out of business. Like this, like or they got they merged with United. Like the reality is, is that we have no one to blame but ourselves. And it's 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 very gratifying to get in our soapbox and say, "Gosh darn you, Lenovo! You should have done a better job." But the truth of the matter is. We brought on ourselves and the like, and all this stuff is on us. The loss of privacy on us, all this stuff on us because we don't care or we're not willing to pay for it. And, and quite frankly, I, if I sound upset, it's because I am, because when you get to things like this, this is an issue where, where the majority kind of rules, like take something like Google, uh, Google is an unbelievable, fantastic, amazing resource or Facebook. Like everyone is on Facebook. Like I don't have a vote. Like if I want to use these services, and even if I were willing to pay for them, I know that I could never do so because the reality is the vast majority of people don't care and don't want to pay.